Everybody's eyes are a little bit different. We are all unique and different. Yeah. And a lot of times, I believe, I can't remember who mentioned it in the back this morning, but we spend somebody else trying to walk like somebody else, trying to mirror our life to somebody else when the only one we should be mirroring is Him. Amen? Yeah. Because when I learn to mirror Him, I truly find out who I am. And when I find out who I am, I can do what He's called me to do. Amen? We're going to go before the Lord tonight. I know a lot of y'all have some prayer requests and some needs. If you have anything you need prayed for, just come up front. But let's just pray today and ask God to help us to realize today that we're individuals today. And we can be who, we, who He's called us to be today. Brother Terrence, we don't have to wait till we get home. We don't have to wait anywhere. But we can call upon the name of the Lord today and He can change our life. Amen. I want to be used of Him. But I can only be used of Him when I give myself the way I want to be. Amen. So come on, let's go before the Lord at this point today. Lord Jesus, I magnify you, God. God, I magnify you because, Lord, I'm nothing without you. God, I can't walk without you. I can't talk without you. I have no talent. I have no ability without you in my life, oh Lord. But I pray, God, in this place today that there's some people under the sound of my voice, God, that would realize they are unique and they are chosen and created by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, that they have the ability to turn their world upside down. That there is no one else on this planet like them. But God, that you can use them, God, in their area of expertise. Wherever they go, God, in their home, in their families, Lord, God, in their job site, wherever they are, that your will would be done in their life, and they would turn their world upside down by mirroring their life to you, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this service. Bless this people, God, and we give you honor, praise, and glory in the mighty, wonderful, powerful name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Come on, let's just worship him in this place. Lift your hands and raise your voice and magnify him because he is worthy of our praise.
says he has never failed and he ain't going to start now. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is here. That's what you're feeling. Jesus. Jesus is in the house. And he's working. He doesn't wait till the clothes to work. He works all the time. He was working on you while you're here. Yeah. God's hand is on your life, in your life. Thank you for coming this Sunday morning. We're honored that you're here. All of our guests, thank you for coming. To those that have been sick and struggling are able to be back. Praise God that you're here. Amen. Are you glad that your friends are here? That your neighbors are here? Are you glad? Acts chapter 8, verse 26. If you're able and willing and like to stand in honor of the reading of the word. We'll read these few scriptures and then we'll allow you to be seen. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise. Why don't you just try that right now? Be the angel of the Lord and tell your neighbor, Arise. Arise. And go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is desert. And he arose and went. The most important part of this story is them words right there. Amen. When God says it, will you do it? Right. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning, headed home, and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah, or Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Understandest what thou readest? But Philip asked the man, Hey, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. Y'all understand. Yeah. Step one. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in the Bible, Brother Richard. That's right. I need help. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Step one. How can I? Unless somebody helps me. Yeah. And he desired Philip. said, come up and sit with me. The place of the scripture of what she read was this, Isaiah 53. It says, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, Who's he talking about? Is he talking about himself? Or is he talking about somebody else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at that same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water and the eunuch said, the preaching's over and it's time for a response. And the eunuch said, see, Ooh, Jesus. See? Here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Today I will. I have preached this before. Similar. What doth hinder me? What doth hinder me? Are you ready for the Lord to speak to you today? Yes. Pray with me right now. Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you because you know everything. You are all powerful and you're everywhere. 
We come to you today from all over the world, all over the country. We come from, from different backgrounds. We come from different uh, circumstances and things that have surrounded us and brought us here today. But we're all really here for the same reason, God. We need help. We need you. We're here, Lord, because something's got in our path, something's got in our life, something's got in our mind. And we need to know that it's gone. I pray deliverance moves through this house. Restoration is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. The church said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seen. A messenger from heaven comes and speaks to the man of God and says, get up and go. Then he gave him the direction and the location. Unless he needed further clarification, the specific part of the area that is desert. And he immediately obeys. Amen? Amen? When he arrived, he saw a man, an Ethiopian, a eunuch. Please hear me when I tell you, he knows where you are, and he has someone on your path who will help you. I said, he knows where you are, and he has someone on your path who will help you. When Philip arrived at the desert, he saw a man from Ethiopia, a eunuch. A eunuch is a man who has, the technical term, been castrated. As a way of removing his desire... For virtually everything, especially his susceptibility to be seduced by a woman. The reason for this is he was a man of great responsibility in his country and great prestige because he was the caretaker for the queen's treasure. And his state as a eunuch made him exempt from being coerced or tempted are romanced into giving up guard over the treasure. And the Bible says he had come to Jerusalem for a worship. The eunuch, in my study and my research, was a man who had been medically made to be unable to produce children. But in the process, all of his desire had been squashed. He was what was commonly referred to by the rabbis, a proselyte of the gate. Now, a proselyte is someone who comes from one way of believing and converts to another way of believing. This man was not a Jew, but he was from Ethiopia. So he would not have been considered for service in the temple, but was only able to worship from the gate. A foreigner, not of Jewish blood, who had adopted the Jewish belief system, including all the tenets of the law, was a proselyte of righteousness. But a proselyte of the gate was somebody who had something in their life that prohibited them from following all the steps of the law, such as being a eunuch. It was an inferior title. And it was one where you recognized your place as subordinate to all the normal people. And the avenue wherein a proselyte of the gate, and hence the name, the avenue that they could worship was not personal and active, but they could stand at the gate, stand at the front door. They weren't considered worthy of coming in, but they could stand at the front door 
and vicariously worship with the church. They could only experience worship through somebody else's experience. In one book reading I read, they were referred to as half proselytes. This was a backhanded way for the church to appear spiritual without actually allowing less than people into the sanctuary. Picture this. A man who in his own country, in his own calling, in his own vocation was highly respected. It appears that he had paid a considerable permanent price in order to have this position that he has. It come with great authority and likewise great responsibility. But he has chosen to leave a... Uh, help me, Jesus. He has chosen to leave a place where he is respected, where he is acknowledged as someone having great authority, where he's in an important position to go worship where he's not welcome. I feel Jesus moving in this house right now. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a hunger waiting to be birthed in you that will cause you to give up your rights to self-esteem. It will cause you to give up your rights, period. It will cause you to give up your rights to, to be accepted among people. And it will cause you to push and to press and to pray and to cry and to draw near to God. There's no telling the dangers and pitfalls that he navigated as he drove his chariot 1,500 miles in order to come to Jerusalem to leave familiarity. Brother Larry, when God puts that hunger inside of you, I, I just feel something in my spirit right now that we have got to learn to acknowledge that desire. We talked about it in elements. Uh, there is something that won't let me sleep. Uh, there is something that won't let me enjoy my food. Uh, there is something that won't let me enjoy my sin. Uh, there is something that won't let me enjoy my old friends. Uh, there is something that will not leave me alone and let me enjoy my life. Well, I know it's true. I know it's true. You post on Facebook trying to find myself. Come on. Come on. Welcome to Revelation. Yes. Welcome to the place where you're going to find out the reason why you were ever born in the first yes. place. Welcome to the place you're going to find out what you need for completion and fulfillment and for hope and for strength and for life and to live a life that's full. Just like God promised. He didn't promise that you'd have to be empty. He didn't promise that you'd have to be poor. He didn't promise that you'd have to be hopeless. He said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And he came left behind familiar and accepted to come to unfamiliar and rejected and stand outside. The only hope of the extent of the worship he was eligible for was to stand at the gate and watch. Oh, I know I know you want to get out there. That's right. I know you want to leave that seat behind and feel every step toward the altar one more way to fall off of you. Yep. I know you want to dance before the Lord with freedom. I know that you want to worship Him without that guilt and that shame tying you down and holding you back. I know you feel like you've got 10,000 pounds on both hands and when you go to raise them up, the devil reminds you that you ain't worthy of praising God. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I can't say but I can't stay away. Sister Maria, we've been content to stand at the gate. We've been content to just get all we thought we deserved. 
That's how this land was. But the hunger wouldn't leave him alone. The desire wouldn't leave him alone. He wouldn't stop pushing. He wouldn't stop pressing. He wouldn't stop. Can you picture him in your mind? I don't know what the gate looked like. Can you picture that old boy standing back there peeking? Just hoping. All right, somebody got a blessing. Knowing what it was like yeah. to step from temporary to eternity. Mm -hmm. Never knowing what it was like to step, to step from rejected to accepted. Never knowing what it was like to move from empty to filled. So, I hope you get the picture. I got to be honest with you. It's not a stretch to say, what's wrong with you, brother? Can you get a glimpse of a hunger that is bigger than anything you've ever felt before? To come to a place in your life where, brother David, you burn the ships. You refuse to give yourself a way out even. Yeah. What fueled this endeavor? Somebody somehow, some way has told him about God. Influencing him in a manner that gave birth to a hunger for God. A hunger that drove him to leave behind what he had and to pursue something he could never have. On his way home from Jerusalem, it seems that he has stopped in his chariot and he's sitting there with his Bible. Reading a specific passage of Scripture. Philip, who's on a mission from heaven to where the best he could hope for is a one soul revival. He's been called to go preach at a church that has one member. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have any talent. They don't have any music. They don't have any programs. They don't have anything that we need to get the spirit moving. Just one little old hungry reject. Yeah. And the Lord told the angel... Pack a lunch and go to Samaria. We got work to do. Go tell Philip to stop what he's doing, to leave where he's at, and go to the desert. Oh, I feel it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody feel this. Somebody pick this up. And when he turned the corner, if you will, Brother Blake, when he came around the bend, if you will, he saw the majesty. Of one little black man sitting in a chariot. Yeah. That's all he saw. Yeah. And the Lord said, Now you know why you're here, brother. Yeah. Somebody's got to hear right now. You have never been alone. You have never been rejected. You have never been forgotten. You have never been abandoned. You have never been. to help me. The rest of y'all don't know that song. I don't feel no ways tired. I ain't forgot where I started from. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I decided to go. He was reading in Isaiah 53. 
Can you imagine going home with no opportunity to get what you came for? Can you imagine having to be satisfied with what he got? Can you imagine? Here's what he was reading. Who has believed our message? I'm in the New Living Translation. And to whom will the Lord reveal his powerful arm? Who believes the word? And who has experienced the power of God? Who will experience the power of God? Look what he said. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. Let me tell you what the eunuch heard right then. Connect to that. I'm growing with no hope of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows. Acquainted Oh, I wish y'all hear this preacher right now. Acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Next verse. Yet it was our weakness that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. We thought God was punishing him. A punishment for his own sins. But, verse 5, he was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Next verse. All of us. I said all of us. This is where the eunuch is reading the Bible in the chariot in the desert all by himself. All of us like sheep have wandered away, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid the sins, laid on him the sins of us all. Verse 7. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep silent before his shears, he opened not his mouth. Verse 8. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants. That his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. Now this is what I just read to you. Is what is referred to as a messianic passage. Which means it is prophetic of the coming of Jesus Christ. The character. Help me, Lord, let's just stay together a minute. The characteristics that I just read there were all fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ. So would anybody take a moment to guess what the unit was feeling when he read it? He asked Philip and said, Who's he talking about? Yeah. Himself? Or somebody else? And Philip said, let me tell you who Jesus is. Yeah. 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 But that wasn't the most beautiful thing. What the most beautiful thing was, Philip said he's talking about Jesus. But the eunuch said, uh-uh. Talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about me. I see myself in that word. I see myself in that man. And somebody 
needs to realize that whatever you've been through, He carried it to the cross. He nailed it to the tree. You have been set free. Well, I wish we could praise God in this house right now. You gotta believe it. Look, it says there was nothing attractive about him. Read it sometime. What happened to a young man is castrated. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'll tell you that it happened to him when he was a young boy because he was destined. Yeah. He was destined to look after the treasure. Yeah. And when that happened to him, he didn't grow. And he didn't get any muscle told. And his voice never changed. And he took on feminine characteristics. So everybody that would have seen him would have known who he was yeah. Yeah. and what he was. Yep. But for the first time in his life, that's why, that's why Andre wrote that song. I don't know what he was thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody. Because you know what the eunuch saw? He saw himself in the life of Jesus Christ. And that's why he came to earth. Because, Brother David, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. The feeling, not just the action. He didn't actually have everything you have, but he felt what you feel. You know what, Brother Cody? And the other Brother Cody, I'll talk to both of you. You know what that means? That means when I was locked up in my bedroom, yeah. depressed and discouraged and feeling like a loser and feeling like maybe this world was better if I didn't live in it. <laughs> he knows what that feels like. Yeah. When you were a little girl and the thing you hated to hear more than anything was that door creaking open in the middle of the night. He knows what that feels like. I ain't supposed to talk about all these real things. But you, you've been in a mess. Yeah. You've been in a struggle. Yeah. You have been mistreated. Yeah. You have been hurt. You have been abandoned. And you have been looking for what you're finding all of your life. But the devil is creeping into your mind right now. And he is putting thoughts in there that said, that's not about you. That's about everybody else. But I'm talking about Brother Ronnie, somebody that was rejected by everyone he'd ever met except his homeland. But he left it, Brother Richard, because he heard of something. Something greater. Yes. Yeah. Said he was despised and rejected by those who he most desired to be with. A man of sorrow connected to the deepest grief. 1,500 miles he had traveled observing the beauty of worship in the only living God in somebody else's life. And on the way home, unfulfilled, grieving what he cannot ever hope to have. But he heard the word that said he carried our weaknesses upon him. He was pierced for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. All of us have gone astray. All of us have left his path to follow our own path. Nobody cared that he was going to die without children to carry on his name. He was life was cut short. He was unjustly condemned. Philip said, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. But the eunuch said, I need you to tell me about me. And it has caused him, what he has read has caused him to stop and to read and ponder, but he can't figure it out by himself. He needs help. And God sent a man 
Not just any man, but a man named Philip who is riding high on faith in the evidence of what God has been doing through his ministry. A man who has experienced the personal demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. A man who knows he's on a mission from God. A man who ministers to an audience of one just as passionately as he did to the synagogues that were filled up. And Philip began at that same passage and preached unto him Jesus. That man who was reviled and rejected. Reduced and maligned to an object of shame and ridicule. But he did it all so we could have hope. Yes. You see, in the desert, in a chariot, in the life of one rejected, the audacity of Jesus Christ allowed the seed of hope to be planted in a life that had never known it. Imagine, if you will, the thoughts moving through the mind of the eunuch when it said, we all like sheep have gone astray. And the eunuch says, does that mean me too? Of course it does. It's the message of Jesus. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So, so the eunuch says, if I felt that pull, if I felt that call, it means he knows me. You mean if I felt that call, it means he knows who I am? Yes. Yes. Like everything about me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And somewhere in the distance, Outlined against the sun came a man with a mission from the throne. No, it wasn't Jesus this time, but it was a man of God yeah. who come through the desert. Can you imagine? Two men on a divine intersection. One of them hungry and one of them carrying the food. The eunuch's greatest dream is about to come to pass. He knows who I am. Sure. I'm not disqualified from being in his presence. No. Well, how about if I get three Sundays in a row? How if I, about if I come to church so many times that I get a, a seat that they know that's mine? We learned it this morning. He told Jeremiah, he said, let me tell you something, boy. Before you was ever in your mama, I knew you. Yeah. I started working on you while you was in your mama. Yes. That's right. And when you were born, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That's what the unit is experiencing. Because I really get frustrated because we talk about it, Brother Shannon, but while I'm preaching this powerful stuff, I expect people to be clapping and amen and hollering. But more than anything right now, I hope, please forgive the horrible reference, I hope there's some people that have lived like the eunuch in here. That they hear. Yeah. Me? Yeah, me? Me? But they told me I was useless. They told me they didn't want me around. They told me I had nothing to offer. You mean God? Don't get swayed by the opinion of people? Acts 8, 36. Because you see now, he stopped and Philip got on, but now they're traveling. Yeah. Oh, Brother David, it's such a beautiful thing. But he's not convinced yet. He's not convinced yet because while they're driving along and Philip has preached to him Jesus, 
And I just got to let you know, you don't preach Jesus to nobody without baptism coming up because it's an essential part of who Jesus is. So somehow the other brother David, he preached to him, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And while they're riding along, the eunuch nudges Philip and says, hey, some water. You know, this is the final thing, Brother Blake. He said, there's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Yeah. And Philip said, nothing. <laughs> well, what happened to all my stuff? I was hoping you would ask. He was wounded for our transgressions. Yeah. Glory. He was bruised for our iniquities. He said, if you believe on the Lord with all your heart, you can be baptized. What, what hinders you? What doth hinder you? Not your sin. Not your physical limitations. Not your mental limitations, not your emotional limitations, not who your mama was or your daddy was or your grandma was or your grandpa was, not what school you went to or didn't go to. So here you are. Yeah. So what doth hinder me to be baptized? He went down in the water. He was baptized. And the penalty of everything that was against him was taken away. And he, he was accepted. So he was accepted. Maybe not by men. But he was accepted by God. He was complete. He wasn't lacking anymore for the first time in his life. He was saved by the testimony of a God who loved him so much that he came to earth for the express purpose of taking away that shame, that humiliation, and the hindrances were gone. I'd like everybody that would to come to the front right now. Just come and stand, if you will. If you want to come anyway. As you're coming, I want to ask you, have you ever felt lost, ashamed, abandoned, or hopeless? Have you ever wondered? Y'all come on all the way up to the front. There's some folks trying to get up here and because y'all are scared they can't get in. <laughs> have you ever sat in the chariot in the desert? wondering is there an avenue where I can even be saved does he even know who I am has he noticed me it's there that he designed you to hear a word today that would give birth to faith in you that would lead you to a place where you can understand who Jesus is and how much he loves you because he was wounded for your transgressions he was bruised for your iniquities the chastisement, the price for your peace was on him. With his stripes, you're healed. Have you sinned? Yep. Bible says if you say you haven't sinned, you're a liar. And that in itself is a sin. Have you been bruised, beaten, and wounded by life? And did it happen because you made bad decisions? Yep. A lot of times. Whatever you bring to the table, you're who he died for. 
to take it away. To take away every hindrance. To take away every hindrance. Yes. You. My wife and, and the team. Yeah. They're about, she's about to sing a song. But I want you to take it personal. If you can in your mind, I want you to assume there ain't nobody in here but you. In your chariot in the desert. And the Lord is going to take away everything that has ever hindered you. We got people in here that God wants to use you in the gifts. I'm talking about people already filled with the Holy Ghost. That, that God wants to use you in the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, tongues and interpretation, and uh, laying on of hands, gift of faith, all of that. But you're hindered. You need to be set free tonight. Today, I preach so long it feels like night. Are you ready? Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready to come to a pool of water? And ask the prophet. Now, I, that you preached a good message. Now put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. What does hinder me? So I want you to respond. I can't make you respond. You're not going to respond. You already did that. We could already be out on the door. Be out the door getting them chicken wings ready. to be like all the way over here to Katie who's just really taking pictures but she's at the altar you know what's held you back and the Lord came today to say I took that already you know something sister Stephanie it's been gone since the day you were born yeah. as far as he's concerned you just gotta believe it yeah. Yeah. you just gotta believe it so if you just shut your eyes right before they sing I want to help you pray because there's many times we, we talk about repenting and this is what and, and people say well I really don't know what to do but I have you know that I don't know if there is in the world a better expert at repenting than me I'm, I'm saying it's the truth not because I'm so good but because I have so much practice. Because I, I'm just learning this, Brother Shannon. I'm just learning that the hindrances are gone. How many times? Well, if I could just quit that, if I could just stop that, if I could just do this, if I could just do that, and the Lord said, dude.
I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Wash me, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness.
face right before I started. And nobody knows and nobody will ever have to know. But you're going to have to let God heal you. 